Good morning, everyone. Welcome in to JC Now. Today we are talking with Mickey Dean, the Director of Economic Development here for the Junction City, Geary County region. We've got so much to get to about the EDC, but first of all, good morning, Mickey, and thanks for coming in. Well, Anthony, thank you. I appreciate your time this morning. I really do. We're going to talk about what you do with the Economic Development Commission and kind of everything that goes into the EDC. But first of all, you've been here for seven years and obviously uh, very much enjoy the job. Before we get into some of the specifics about what you do, what do you enjoy? about being the director of economic development i enjoy working with a community and working with companies to see how you can make that community grow i enjoy the challenge there is and believe me economic development is a challenge and working with our companies uh, to see them expand and grow to see people move up through the ranks within those companies and get good jobs that are well paying and that creates more opportunities for our community and its growth Let's talk about economic development right now. And can you kind of give us an insight of what the day to day looks like for you and what kind of economic development just in the big picture means? Well, day to day is um, economic development. And I think I've mentioned this before is not a switch on, switch off kind of process. It's very network relationship orientated. It takes a long time to move projects through a process when you're looking at spending, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in a community. Uh, but it can also be pretty mundane too. It could be helping a company with where do I market or best advertise for a position? How do I find a specific position? So we do everything from you know working with a big project for potential sites, infrastructure builds, all the way down to transportation issues, labor issues, even sometimes on the smaller side, specific marketing issues for them. Well, you obviously said right there that it's not one of those things you can just turn on and have a bunch of businesses come or a bunch of development happen. I want to talk about that process because I understand some people might not fully grasp of how difficult it can be to maybe get the process going and get the process rolling. And so with that, maybe some people want to know what's going on day to day. Legally, there's some things you just can't say. Right. The buzzword these days seems to be the word transparent. But what people need to realize is these are private companies we're dealing with and they don't have to be transparent. These are their private, their pieces of private information. These could be impacted with contracts, um, with different pieces of their business that they don't want competitors to know about. They don't want a competitor to know where they're moving or what they're thinking of. Uh, it could be relationship wise for work contracts. So we have to respect that. They are our client in a sense. And so we have to respect their confidentiality and how they move. So why it's, st- you know, it starts oftentimes a connection to a company for myself. We'll start with a relationship either with a big industrial broker or what we call a site selector. And those people will bring us potential projects. And many times in the introductory phase of that, I don't even know the name of the company that we're working with. We have to start providing information to those site selectors or those brokers so that they can continue to look at our community as a potential site. The longer we go in the process, and and believe me, it's they call it site selection, but really what it is is a process of elimination. And so the longer you go in the process, the more kind of what I call rounds you make and the more information you get. But companies are very cautious when they're looking at a site, when they're looking at expanding or growing, because they're not just looking at us. Geary County Junction City is not just competing here in our little region. We are competing nationally and internationally for these firms and these investments, which could mean a lot to our community. Um, So I have to be very careful in how we walk through that process. I think what you're saying is It's not secrecy. It's trying to maintain the credibility that the EDC has because, like you said, once that trust is broken, that deal could very quickly fall apart. Oh, very, very quickly. Um, And you're right. It is totally credibility with the company, the site selectors, because if if we mess up with a site selector on a project, it's a very – even though it's a big world, it's a very small world. And so – that site selector one may not bring us another potential project in the future if we stepped on their toes and caused them an issue because you have to remember they're getting paid from the company as well, right? So we're affecting their livelihood too. Um, And then they also could not 
maybe bring us another project. But then it, word of mouth gets around that, you know, this project was leaked or something happened and, and it could cost a company millions of dollars in contracts. It could cause labor issues. So yeah, there's the whole host. And yes, credibility is very, very important in our world. Let's talk about a hypothetical here for a second. So let's say that you've got a big project coming in. This is just speaking hypothetically here and it gets leaked. What happens locally or with that company um, where, and perhaps they find out that it got leaked? What do you think is the impact that could have locally and then with that company? Well, I'll take it one step. I'll give you an example from the past, if that's okay. This one's very easy. So in the past, I um, worked for a community. Their population was about 3,300 people. And we got a call from a developer, a broker, said that there was a company out of, um, I think it was Michigan or Minnesota, that was looking at doing two new plants in the part in part of the Midwest. And they had selected us, and they had selected another community that was either in Iowa or Illinois in a smaller rural community, because that's what they were comfortable with. So, But they said, we're very, very specific. The owner or president doesn't want anything to leak out, doesn't want... Well, what it ended up in the long run, they were going after a regional manufacturer for a big contract, and they needed a site locally. So we walked through the process. We They wanted to build a suit. We had to build a suit. We had all the designs for the building. We'd spent hours and money in our community to put this project together. It was going to be around a 25 or $30 million project, which some people in the grand scheme may say that's not a lot, but to me that's a lot of money in a community of 3,300 people. And it was going to be somewhere between 25 to 30 good jobs. So we kept our little traps shut. We didn't say anything. We were moving along, and I get a call on a Thursday afternoon, and I can still remember, Anthony, it was a Thursday, and it's and the gentleman, my broker, said, Mickey, the project's off. And I said, what happened? I said, nothing has leaked. We are moving forward. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And he said, the mayor in the community, and whether it was Iowa or Illinois, I can't remember, saw fit to go to a press conference and leak the company's name and what they were going to do, and it upset the president so much because it affected their potential negotiations for the contract they were going after that he pulled both projects. So I lose a 25 or a $30 million project and 25 to 30 jobs in my community as a result of somebody else in another community who couldn't be silent. That's the impact it could have. Um, and you just never know. It's they, like, again, I will reiterate, they're private companies. You don't know their reasons. And it's not really our business to know their reasons. It's our business to help develop bring investment, good jobs, and opportunities to our community. The time always comes when the leaders for our community will know what it is, when it hits that correct point after they've done their due diligence. But what I don't want to see us do is lose the opportunity as we are going through the process. One of the questions I have is talking about some of the big accomplishments that have come, such as businesses like Michelin and Eagle Rail Car, obviously a great impact to the community. When you think back to those projects, how long did those negotiations go on for? Well over a year, year and a half for either one of those, depending on either the first round or the second. Um, when a company's looking at investing, growing, expanding, the thing to remember is that company has to be operating at its peak performance, right? Before it can say, well, I'm going to invest another, you know, with Michelin, it was $100 million and more jobs. Well, they're not just going to decide one morning when they walk in that, yeah, this is what we're going to do. They've got layers that they've got to go through. Obviously, Michelin is a very large company. Eagle Rail is a fast growing company that's very well run. So they need to take their time and do their due diligence. And so, yeah, it doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen in a vacuum. There's a lot of effort and thought going into it. It could be looking for new contracts. It could be looking for new customers. And we have to respect that and be there as their partner. I look at us as a partner to our companies when they're trying to grow and recruit new opportunities. I guess one of the last questions that I would have and I'd like to have you expand on would be, can you just kind of detail what exactly can go wrong and how quickly can go wrong? Let's say you have a deal in place and the economy goes bad. That can derail things like this too. It's not a problem that could be the Junction City, Geary County region. It could be the economy. It could be all kinds of other issues. Can you kind of discuss that? Yeah, it could become you know a decision to pull a project, put a project on hold, um, scale it back, whatever, scale it up can be extremely subjective um, in the eye of the company. And just an example is we were working with a site selector on a very large potential project, which has now been on hold for almost a year, 
right? And I keep my I keep in touch with the site selector for the project. It was the CEO that put it on hold. He was looking at us as a location, and we were galloping along real well and two other locations. But because of the election year and uncertainty, because of interest rates, even though they're not as high as they might have been 20, 25 years ago, they're still higher than they were for a long period of time. So you have to take into account all those factors, Anthony, and that can affect how a company operates. And that will affect, if that affects how a company operates in its existing operations, it's definitely going to affect how they make a decision and expanding their operations. And, you know, I was recently told by a broker that right now what's happening is there's a lot of companies out there that maybe have the cash reserves to move forward, probably do need to start looking at capacity for expansion. But they're, if they have 5 or they have 8% capacity left in their facility right now, they're, they're doing everything to make sure they use that all. Because right now, it's very uncertain what's going to happen with our election, what's going to go on with the interest rates. And all of that plays a huge factor. And we have to be, as an economic development person, we have to be cognizant of that. We have to be aware of that and respectful of these are the decisions they're making. And so they're not making a decision strictly on looking at Junction City, Geary County, Kansas. For They're looking at what are they doing. If they're a national company how are their vendors responding? If their vendors are pulling back and not asking for as many products, then they may not be expanding as as fast as they could. So there's this whole level of factors. If you have an ag-related business, is the ag economy down? So maybe they're not making as many tractors. If you have, you know, feed for animals, but hay is really high, that's going to affect prices. So it's, it's, I love what I do, but what people don't realize is all the inputs that come into it to try and make it happen. We've got a lot of good, useful information out of this discussion about economic development. We've been talking with Mickey Dean, the director of the Economic Development Commission for Junction City, Geary County. Thanks so much for coming in. And is there anything else you'd like to add? I'd just like to say I appreciate your time. Um, And I appreciate the opportunity to talk more about something that I love, which is developing a community and growth and working with companies. And I will also tell you that we all have to remember that it is a layering factor. Uh, You have to have your different layers. And just because maybe I focus on one doesn't mean, or more so sometimes, doesn't mean the other areas aren't equally as important. But you've got to be cognizant of what you do to help build those building blocks. Well, a lot of great information has been passed along today. Thanks so much for coming in. Appreciate it. You've been listening to JC Now on 107.9 FM, 1420 KJCK.